All right, for their take on today's big stories, all the headlines, let's bring in Sky News host, National Affairs Editor at the Daily Telegraph, James Morrow in Sydney, and media writer for The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth. Well, welcome to you both. We've got about an hour to go before Peter Dutton will get to his feet. He'll deliver the budget address in reply. He was here on the program last night, James. He said housing, energy and national security were his policy priorities. We learned today that he'll make migration a feature of tonight's big speech. Now, to set the scene, remember on Tuesday night, Labor proposed they will cut migration. But this week, they've also been forced to revise up their net migration numbers. So they're not off to a good start. It'll go from 375,000 a year to 395,000. And to put that into perspective for people at home, that still at 395 is double the long run immigration average under John Howard's government. So any idea they're going to actually tackle this high migration, well, I reckon that's a con. The word tonight is that Dutton could well pledge to slash migration down as low as 160,000. Putting aside COVID, we haven't seen 160,000 people since 2005. I tell you, James, it would be one hell of an election battle if oh, that's yeah. where this takes us. Well, yeah, that's exactly right, Peter. And, you know, I'll tell you, this is issue, I think, is so important. I think it's really important for the coalition to he face this head on, simply for the reason that this is the, Im the I I uh, issue, sorry, that crystallizes that kind of divide between the elite political class and everybody else. You know, immigration has in politics for the longest time been this kind of third rail that you're not allowed to touch. You know, uh, if you say anything about it, if you criticize it, you're immediately labeled racist and xenophobic and against multiculturalism and all of these things. And so Peter Dutton has this really big challenge ahead of him to thread this sort of needle here because it does, you know, every economist now who's serious about this does acknowledge that this pushes up housing and it takes a lot longer to build houses than it does to bring in and approve visas and migrants. So, you know, there's that gap. But we're also seeing an awful lot of tension in terms of community cohesion. Um, we've seen this play out hugely, I think, with the Israel and Gaza issue. And the real divide in this community, in our community, over this issue, you know, which has been driven a lot by different migrant communities with different views on this. Um, and the thing mm. is that people are really realizing that, you know, some migration is good. It is good for the country. But overall, what you're talking about is a way to sugarcoat uh, the fact that we're in a per capita recession, our household income, our standards of living are all going backwards, more congestion, more traffic, you know, harder to get a house, harder to get a ladder if you're a younger person. Um, these are all big issues that Peter Dutton can crystallize if he comes up with a number, sticks to it, and points out the fact that this cap on students, you know, that they're talking about, it's not even a real cap. It's just the minister can sign it if he wants to, but it's not even in the law. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity here, I think, for the coalition to, I think, divide, um, to, to get those people who are not represented by the political class and the elite and the media that say immigration is uniformly good, we should just go as absolutely maximalist on it as we can, and say, no, we need to think about this in a more considered way.